Okay. Um, welcome to the Norton School Committee Thursday, April 9th, uh, remote participation meeting. Um, the only thing on the agenda that I have is um, a vote to change the school calendar. So I'll throw that off over to Dr. Bayetta. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Welcome to everybody. Um, hope everyone is well. Um, we are recommending that we eliminate April vacation, which would be Tuesday through Friday because Monday is a state holiday. You do not have the authority to send students to school on a state or federal holiday. Um, we would therefore go from, uh, we would have the four days as remote learning. And our new release date would be Monday, June 15th. Those four days would be part of the 181 days um, of the calendar year. Um, for um, as required by the commissioner who basically has announced that you don't have to go past the 185th uh, in general. Um, this, you know, you're, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't in, in decisions like some of these, but right now with literally the inability for us to um, go anywhere on vacation, people have already canceled their vacations and so on and so forth. We just felt that with the positive energy that's been happening with the remote learning that we keep on going um, we still don't know, unfortunately, and probably won't know until April vacation what the future looks like in terms of coming back May 1st or May 4th. Um, so that makes it even more difficult. Um, over 90% uh, of our teachers who decided to, to participate in the uh, survey that the association Shannon Taylor, the union president, sent out are in favor of continuing uh, to be uh, online. Um, I think it's just the idea that the shutdown happened the way it did. We were doing educational experiences. Now we moved more of a remote learning. It makes sense to, um, to move in that direction. So that's my recommendation for you for your consideration. And I understand there was a, a conference call with the teachers today. And, and yeah, so I informed them uh, that that was going to be my recommendation, and that the vote belongs to you as statute, and it's not my. Uh, we make recommendations, but it's a committee that we i.e. what we did about uh, the, uh, the fall. Um, and so if we had had snow days and we needed to make up, we potentially could have done this. Of course, that would have been a lot more controversial because people would have still gone on vacation probably and all of that. But um, so this, this is one of those things where the momentum structure uh, we're dealing with next week will be our second week. That'll give us a little bit more data and information from not only parents and students, but from the teaching staff, the paraprofessionals, the administration to see what's been going well and what needs to be further tweaked. Our labor management team, um, consisting of um, teachers, one paraprofessional and myself, Dean and Jen, um, will deal with those issues as they come forward. We had uh, almost 300 people in our call this afternoon, our, as I call them, town halls, uh, totally voluntary, um, but good participation, good questions, and the number one thing they want to take off their plate is are we going or not going to school during April vacation? And the reason why they're asking that is because they'd have to come up with lesson plans right. for that week. Yeah, so we, we and when you say we're going into our second week, you mean a remote learning as opposed Correct. to enrichment, right. which is what we started with. Correct. So we just need a vote to accept. Yeah, so uh, any comments from the school committee? And then we do have to open up to the public. And I, I do believe we have uh, a number of people on the call today. Mm -hmm. So someone might want to say something. I don't know. Do we have anything from school committee members? Yeah, so I have a couple of, couple of um, thoughts on this, or one, I guess, in, in specific. Um, well, well, I agree with it, and I think that it's it's a good idea. At the same time, um, while, it's, while it's unlikely, that there's going to be um, anybody traveling or, or doing something for the April, you know, the April vacation. Um, I think we do have to allow that, that some people may have plans that they're not going to back out of. So um, with that in mind, I think it would be smart if the April vacation week is an educational week, but there shouldn't be anything that's a mandatory grading happening during that. It can, it, we're, we're kind of springing this on people at the last minute. And I, uh, I would hate to do harm to a child's um, grades, et cetera, because of something we're spraying on them last minute. So uh, I'm all for a, a learning environment for the week. I, I'm not so much for um, something that might might negatively affect somebody who, 
who did have plans and, and didn't decide to pay. So, so my, my counter to that would be that any parent at any point at any time can go on vacation to go anywhere, and they're still responsible for their grading. It happens all the time, as you know. Um, my and, concern and with that, going... This is one that was a planned vacation for the school, and while we're under very, very wildly different circumstances than, than normal, I, I still think we should allow that, that some people did have plans for for the vacation week. I, again, I'm not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do what you want to do. I'm just right. saying there shouldn't be a um, there shouldn't be any kind of a, um, harm to a, to a child who whose family decided that they they did want to follow through with plans they have. I would leave that up to the parents who would normally communicate with us and tell us that they're going on vacation. Um, I think we have to be very careful of setting the stage for not having, quote, remote learning taking place as we've described it, where a grade can take place in the secondary level, 9 through 12, and it's feedback and input at the and participation at the K to 8 level. Um, because we still, we want to count these as our days. Um, so I get it. I mean, I don't know how many of those requests we would get. Um, but, and we would, I mean, we deal with those requests all the time in terms of families coming forward. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that, that would disallow us from counting them as days just because we're not giving tests on it, right? I mean, it's, it's... No, we, we, again, the idea is that it's a required day of school established by the state um, if we're going to use it as days. Um, so it, it comes, it, it, that's the reason why you need the calendar change. We right. could have easily have said next week, that week we're off, and we're just going to do here's your enrichment stuff for the week, and we'll see you the following Monday. Right, we just, just understand what I'm saying. You know, like there's... There's required days that are required and required days that are not so required. I mean, if you're homesick on a day when you don't have a test, it's not the, the end of the world. If you're homesick on a day when you have three tests, it's, that's a right. problem, you know. Is, is there any way that we could we could um, still have school, per se, as we're doing it now, um, and then say, but let's give a two-week window on this so anything that's happening this week is happening and anything that's happening the week after is happening and everything has to be turned in on that friday all right so to the friday before right so this so this question actually came up a little bit earlier today with the with the uh, staff we've always said since the beginning of this that flexibility with materials being due and so on and so forth has to happen because we still have students who are online today and this afternoon the first thing I thought of when the rain came pouring down and the thunder showers came through was which part of Norton went out. Um, so, uh, or am I going to go out and not have, you know, my own work being able to be done. Um, so I still think that that is, uh, the flexibility has not been uh, that, uh, our, our question to them has constant, our comment to them, to the staff has always been adaptability, creativity, and flexibility is what's needed right now. So we have um, established that uh, it does, it's not perfect. We're going to have to. The reason why we have a working committee is because we want to send some clarity. Caroline mentioned something earlier today at the beginning, prior to this meeting. I'm sorry, I picked on you, Caroline, but it may not be as consistent as we're being told it is. And I want to address some of those things. Um, you know, we have a. Uh, a a good thing where we have a lot of creativity and flexibility, but we also have established very clear guidelines of expectations that we want in terms of content areas, departments, grade levels, etc. So I don't have any problem with um, clearly communicating that if we're going to school those four days, that there are some expectations of families that are going to be uh, not partaking in online or remote learning. Um, or choosing to only do some of it and not others. Uh, an example might be tomorrow, Good Friday, where we have people who decide to not come on, to, to utilize technology as part of their faith, um, or potentially uh, Passover days as we just had. Those would be, again, we're not holding students to this line like we typically would try to do. Okay, so we heard I mean, from the people, oh, sorry, go ahead, Dan. No, I was just, I mean, I don't want to, you know, stir the pot, but, you know, we're talking about something that, you know, and, and I'm not going anywhere so I can say this, but if you have a device, you can do the online learning. You know, I mean, it's, it's unique in that unlike every we other vacation anyway. where we don't have, you know, we don't have the option, any other vacation, or if you go on vacation on a regular school week or whatever it is, I mean, 
again, I'm not saying I would do this or a parent should do that, but you know, the option is there if you have your device with you to still do some part of your learning and not just we, have it. So we still have it. students, Dan, to your comment, we still have students that we're trying to reach out to. We've already, as you, as you know, that, you know, because of issues, um, I just today was dealing with um, technology in terms of a specific side of town where we're having some issues with connectivity. And as you know, I, I'm reaching out with Comcast on that. And I have a, a list. I have four homes on one street. Um, and, you know, how are we going to try to address that for that student? And it does include, in my opinion, or, or if I remember correctly, I believe one of those homes includes a high school student. Um, so I, yeah, I get Denez's point in terms of let's be flexible as much as possible that week to families because I don't know, somebody's going somewhere. Um, and it could be that they're going to their home down the Cape. Yeah, and yeah, they don't have the connectivity. Hampshire, it doesn't have to be far away. Right, exactly. Um, so, I, again, I don't have a problem of communicating that not only that to families, but also to our staff that, you know, it is a little bit of a flexible week um, only because we've, um, it, it's a flexible week from the perspective that assignments are due or the work is going to be done, but students have the opportunity to, to make up work from that particular week if, if needed. Since we have Caroline and Cooper on the line, what do you two think of this? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I do think that since we've been out of school for so long, that kind of, you know, getting rid of a, getting rid of a vacation would make sense. But then I also like, you know, as Dennis said, I respect that like other people already have plans that have been made, uh, but yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I also feel like um, it would be difficult since we're just starting to get back into the groove of learning. Um, taking a week off right after we just picked up again might be hard to get back into it again. Um, if we had been doing learning, like a lot of schools jumped in without all of the considerations that you guys put into it. Um, if we'd been doing it from the start, then I think it would have been a different story because we would have had something to take a break from. But I feel like the break would just be from nothing and almost a little bit wasteful. You're so smart because one of the panelists said that as well, so I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, let me let me just be clear that I'm not saying that we should have the vacation. I'm saying that we should have the school, but there shouldn't be any any mandatory um, anything due, no tests, etc. Uh, I'll vote for this, but if it turns out that there, you know, teachers are holding hard to kids and saying, "Hey, this is due," etc. I'm going to be disappointed. You know, I, I, I don't think that's the spirit of what we're doing here. Um, again, I'll, I'll vote for it because I, I, to what Carolyn said, I don't think you want to just take another week off. But it's, you know, the flexibility to me is, is paramount right now. Okay. Do we have any further discussion on the school committee on this? Okay. Uh, any panelists, Jen? Uh, we have a number of panelists, uh, attendees here tonight. Um, Peter, I want to open it up to you first. You're the first hand I see. Um, people can either raise their hand or type in the chat box. Go ahead, Peter. Can you hear me? Yes. See what everybody says, and the kids are going to be learning to join this during this lockdown, and they're going to be learning a lot during this lockdown, and. Oh, and make sure that everybody watches their hands, stay safe, stay positive, and the more the people can do their job and watch their hands, stay safe, stay positive, and we'll be back to normal, come in, and do my daily lifestyle. Right, everybody? Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everybody. Would anyone else like to um, make a comment or be, did they have a question? We do have a hand up. Well, we had a hand up. You don't have to. Um, okay, hold on. Just give me one second. Um, oops. Shannon, okay. no I'm going to go to you next. Shannon Taylor. Hi, guys. Um, so, Tinez, uh, I think I was on the, the grading committee when we talked about flexibility, and it was definitely um, in the forefront of what we were we were talking about every time was making sure that nothing has a strong due date. We want to make sure that we are keeping everything equitable and knowing that every uh, family circumstances will be very different during this time. 
So I totally understand where you're coming from. And um, that is something that I know that the grading committee had talked about. So I don't think that will be a, a huge surprise to anybody in any way. And that can be part of, um, just to chime in to Denise's comments and others, that can be part of clearly communicating directly from the school committee to the staff on what the expectations are as it pertains to this week. Um, in terms of, you know, the vote is that we definitely want to continue. That's the right thing to do. But we also want to be understandable of what the word flexibility really means, which is we're going to be flexible. We're going to even be more flexible and adaptable those four days than we've been in the past. For some students, they're going to get the work done every single day. For some students, they're going to pass it in the following Monday or the following week. Okay, that sounds like a plan, and it sounds like the teachers are on board with that. So, um, I believe we did have another hand earlier, but it, it's no longer there. So, um, Jamie, teacher, did you have something more? Anybody else would like to make a comment? Seeing none, I'll turn it back over to the school committee. Okay, so we will take a motion to um, adjust the school calendar to, I don't want to say get rid of April school vacation because that just sounds so bad, but um, to continue learning during April school vacation to um, give us an earlier end date in June. Tuesday through Friday only, if you could uh, allow Tuesday for that. Tuesday through Friday better. only, yes, because Monday is Patriots Day. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? So moved. Carolyn Gallagher. Do we have a second? Second, Sherry Cohen. Okay, and we'll do a roll call. Kathleen Stern, yes. Sherry Cohen? Yes, Sherry Cohen. Carolyn Gallagher? Yes. Denez Savas? Yes. Dan Sheedy? Yes. Okay. So that's a five zero. <laughs> And then that takes care of that. And so then there was any uh, any other business? Just a couple of updates, if I may. Um, really, uh, <clears throat> not sh not sure. I'm not ten tentatively um, keep the date for next Thursday's school committee because it was already on the calendar. I'm going to keep it, but I don't know if we'll need it. Um, and, you know, if it's just a regular update that I can do with you that's non-confidential, non-public record issues that I can just send you like I normally do, I'll just send you an email if we have to meet them. We have to post it by Tuesday, so um, we'd make that decision if something comes up. And then um, the only other big one um, is... Um, so, uh, Joe, quick, we're not posting for Tuesday then, right? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Yep. And then food services, um, again, today we had the double pickup uh, because we did Thursday, Friday. Um, and starting uh, uh, next week, we continue with that same format. And then the following week, April vacation, we actually will be providing it... Um, yeah, Monday through Friday. Um, are we coming in, Matt, on that Monday Patriots Day, or are we closed on that day? We are coming in on Monday. We're going to do service that day. Okay, so we'll be serving five days a week, including pickup for Saturday and Sunday as needed. Yep. So that's the week of April, the, starting on the 20th of April. So when you say as needed, does that mean a person has to say, I want a weekend meal? or Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we don't. The reason why we do that is for two reasons. Number one, we're continuously trying to keep good data and information on what our needs would be so that we know how to order. And two, we also don't want to throw away food um, because we have to order food in order for it to come in. Um, it's either once or I think it's twice weekly it's coming in. Um, Just about. Yeah. So we, we don't. That's the, that's the only reason why is to keep the good data in terms of the cost and then um, and then making sure that we're just not throwing product away. So how are we planning you know, budget-wise and product-wise for the weekends, like, are we going to have to bump up the order, or how are they going to make sure they have enough on hand? Yes. For those yes. Go ahead, so, Matt. So we have, um, as part of the, the crisis management plan, we have kept, um, we keep all of our freezers full of food. Uh, so we are always, at any time, we are capable of serving every uh, citizen in the town three meals a day for three days. Um, so we have sufficient stores of food to be able to continue to do this. But if we have to ramp up, um, we're, we're perfectly fine to do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, sounds good. As an example for today, I'm just going back to my text message that came from uh, Mike Vaccaro, our director of food services, and, and Matt. Uh, today we have a double pickup. 
So we had 342 served times four meals, because it's today, twice, tomorrow, twice, for a total of 1,368 meals. Two, 270 Norton Public Schools, 53 what we call the out of district, which could mean students that aren't registered with us, could be a student that goes to another school but lives in the town, and 19 senior residents. So um, that's our biggest total that we've served thus far, if my, if my numbers are correct. And we have reached out to Beth, is it Rossi, to yeah, so we, we, make sure we that are, the seniors know? Yep. Yeah. And we also communicated today through Matt um, with the uh, Norton Housing Authority. Matt, I don't know if you want to bring the committee up to date on that conversation. Yeah, so uh, I spoke with we spoke with Andrea over there uh, today. We had a great conversation. Um, I shared with her the the process that we use uh, at the back door, and she's going to let some other residents know about it that she know it is having food insecurities. Um, I also told her that if she has, if they know of shut-ins, they can. Tell us about that, and we can work through the emergency management and be able to do some delivery. So they have my cell phone number. They're going to keep in close contact as well, um, and we'll just keep talking with everyone. Great. I, I and, think, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Did you have something on that? No, not on that. Well, go ahead. On another topic, that's okay yeah. with you. Yeah. I just, uh, you all know this, but I think it's important just to, since we, there are some folks that actually watch these later. Um, we lost a resident this week, uh, this past week. Uh, her name was Beth Blakely. Um, she's had a, a son who's, who's uh, been with us and graduated and a daughter who's graduating this year. Um, unfortunately, um, she passed late last week um, to um, uh, battling uh, cancer and um, she will be sorely missed. She was a great friend to need and to families in town. Um, she was personally very kind to me when I came on board. Um, and I know some of you know this, but we, we did do a uh, thanks to Vinnie Searcy. Um, and then we had a, a couple of teachers attend, including our music teacher playing with the cello. And we had a graduation ceremony last uh, week um, for um, their daughter, family was there. Uh, we did the social distancing and all that. Um, and uh, so she has succumbed. She'll be greatly missed. Great, great human being. One, uh, one of my favorites to talk to when I had conversations with her. Um, and uh, we wish our best and condolences to the entire Blakely family. Okay. Um, yes, of course. Uh, it, it, she was um, quite a force with need, which was a, has always been a very big supporter of Norton Public Schools. And I know as when I was president of the parent board at the high school, anytime I needed help, she was always the first one to step up. So she's definitely a huge hole in the community, that's for sure. Um, I just had two things. Um, <clears throat> the paraprofessionals sent out a video to us today thanking us for everything that we do, and I can't thank them enough for what they did for us because, especially now, I mean, there are many times on social media that we're slammed for one thing or another, and to get a thank you from our staff means the world to us because, as you know, this is an unpaid job that we spend time on, and I just want to send a heartfelt unbelievably huge, as big as it can be, thank you to all of them because it, it really made our day. I know Sherry was crying and <laughs> I had a few tears and we won't talk about the rest of the people, but um, I, I just want to say publicly thank you to all of them. Um, the other thing was, um, I know this is something that uh, might be on some of the seniors' minds. Um, we don't know what's going on yet. We don't know if we're having senior night or anything, but do we have, like, I had the essays to read for the uh, K. Bert K. Burton uh, scholarship. I'm wondering what's going on with all of the other scholarships that the seniors should get. Um, yeah, that's that a great okay? that's a great question. So um, I, probably next Wednesday or Thursday for the April vacation, I'm going to be calling for us to take a look at everything to do with dates and timelines for graduation scholarships and all that stuff. Um, you know, a lot of this has to do with my maybe a little lack of flexibility um, to just want to start shutting things down and send a bad message that, you know, this is not going to happen and that's not going to happen and this is going to go that way. I, I'm really worried um, that, you know, I, I'm, hope, I, I'm very hopeful and worried at the same time that the Commonwealth decides that 
these last minute decisions about school closure and longer need to be made ahead of time so that we have multiple weeks um, to be able to organize and reorganize not only uh, remote learning, but everything else that goes with it. Um, you know, our first major decision I have to make sooner than later is going to be the eighth grade field trip. Um, and then how does that change and what we're going to do? I've made a pu very public commitment to the students that I really want to celebrate those things that we celebrate every year in Norton that have become part of who we are. It might be later in the year, a different timeline, if you will, but that we shouldn't just say, well, it's canceled. It's more like we're postponing it based upon given, having some flexibility at some point. The biggest decision down the road to make is uh, about all of these things is about if there is the plateau and then it starts coming down, when is the point where gathering two, three, four, five hundred 500 people is available? Because I don't think that's going to be allowed right away if I was thinking about how they're going to open up once this is um, somewhat over. Um, so we have that, we have prom, we have graduation, we have scholarship night. Um, we have all kinds of trips and celebrations that we do with the senior class. We have step up days. We have celebration of transitioning from third grade to a brand new building. Fourth grade, fifth grade is going into sixth grade. Eighth grade is becoming freshmen. All of that happens in... Um, a lot of that happens, to be quite honest, uh, in June. Um, and we, we need to know ahead of time before all of that and then put it together. So I will come back as soon as I have some more specifics with what that looks like. Okay. I, I think my question is more than anything is that um, that we want to make sure that these kids get those scholarships, even if everything is shut down. There has to be a way to reach out to all of the people who actually give scholarships. And even if there isn't a physical night for it, some of these kids really rely on that money and we need to make sure that, that it, it is done in some way, somehow. Yeah, and most of those commitments to scholarships are made a lot earlier than right now. Um, it's usually those last minute ones that come in right around this time that sometimes we have to put off for a year. Sometimes they're already been out there, but some, some years they do them, some years they don't do them because of funding or because of who they're choosing, what they're looking for in choice. Uh, but I will put together um, a scholarship update for the school committee. Um, I'll, I'll start working on that tomorrow. So at least we have that one one item off the table. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have anything else to add tonight? I actually do, Kathleen. Um, Dr. Bayard, I thought maybe you could just um, publicly talk about the um, deliveries that Norton Police were making yesterday of school yeah. supplies. So that so made its way onto um, social media. Just want to clarify. Yeah, so you know what? Let's go to the, the people that came up with this. So I'll turn it over to Jen, who um, was kind of the lead person on this and kind of informed me that we were doing it. Uh, and whoever else she worked with. <laughs> um, so it was actually um, some of our teachers that came up with the um, idea that some of our students may not have access um, to school supplies at home. So for example, crayons, paper, pencils, or um, that families may benefit from um, some of these supplies during a time when we're, when we're not typically used to having kids learning at home. And for those of us who have young children or, or who at one point had young children, we remember there's a lot of coloring and cutting and pasting and you know trying to get that really hands-on approach to learning for our youngest students. So um, what we did because we're doing the choice boards for pre-K to two is I asked our elementary teachers to reach out to their families, um, number one, to see if they needed paper copies of anything that was available because we did not, um, we do not have um, devices available for students in pre-K to two. Um, so, and then also at the same time to see if they needed any school supplies. Um, and what we were able to do is, um, my office is mailing out the paper-based copies of the school choice of the, I'm sorry, of the choice boards. Um, every Friday morning, Pam and I are going in and mailing out, last week we did about 120, um, student copies of that. So those are going out weekly for families. Um, and then we also, um, it was actually a very gracious donation from the Tiger Woods Foundation a few years ago. Um, they donated a bunch of backpacks and we still had a few hanging around. Um, so yesterday, um, Sergeant Dennett and Officer Robichaud delivered um, 24 backpacks to students across the district. Um, and we do have more. I actually um, had a parent reach out to me last night, one of my former students, um, that they were looking for something to do at this time to give back to the community. And they also have a donation of school supplies 
um, that they would like to make, and I'm hoping to connect with them tomorrow. Um, so if there are families out there, you don't have to be um, in the early elementary grades, but if you're looking for some school supplies for your child, please reach out to my office and let us know. We do have backpacks available, um, and it's, you know, pretty basic, but if there are other things that you need, please let us know. Um, and thank you to Jake and to Mark for um, being the delivery boys on this one. They did an awesome job there, just going above and beyond for us. So we we're really grateful. I think it really speaks to that kind of um, what we've been trying to promote for years, and I'm sure Sherry would agree, really kind of that collaboration, um, the town kind of coming together to really support each other. So, you know, it was sort of a coordinated effort um, from Norton Public Schools, but also from Norton Police. So thanks, Jen, for sort of organizing that. It's great. Um, and it is on sort of social media now, so you may get more kind of um, – I guess, queries about it and, and people who are looking for some supplies. So I'm glad that, you know, there is some options available for families to get that um, to them if they need it. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. And then actually Shannon Taylor reached out to me earlier today as well. Um, the MTA is sponsoring a reimbursement grant um, up to a thousand dollars for districts. So if we were to run out of school supplies and need to purchase something to make additional backpacks, um, we could do that. And the MTA, we could apply for the grant. Um, and they would reimburse us up to a thousand dollars, which is a really, really, um, you know, fantastic and generous, um, gift from them as well. So Shannon and I will work on that grant process together. That's great. And can I ask one other question? Um, Dr. Bader, a couple of weeks ago we had talked about maybe having um, a coordinated meeting with, um, I, I think if we, if I remember correctly, it was with the Board of Selectmen, School Committee, Finance Committee with Senator Feeney. Um, it was something that Attleboro was doing. You were going to look into that. I'm not sure if there's any sort of um, kind of update on that is that something that we can do with him um i didn't speak to him specifically about this i actually called his office yesterday about supporting um getting rid of the mcas as a as a graduation requirement because of uh -huh. the situation which the senate did pass today but as i said in, in response to some of you um that means the house has a bill the senate has a different bill i believe it has to go to compromise committee to come up with something but um um I will reach out and take a look and see, and I'll also reach out to um, um, Mike Units, who's uh, oversees the select one. I'll, I'll do the uh, I'll do the general email to everyone about potentially doing a virtual call with our elected um, uh, legislators, if you will. Yeah, I think um, Senator Feeney seems to be really connected that way, and I think it's really important that they hear directly from their constituents um, about some of the challenges and really a lot of the good work that's happening as well. But he does seem to have those meetings relatively regularly with Attleboro. I think it would be great if we could have him join us at one point. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put something together to the side Thank you. Right, and send it out to him. Sorry about that. No, thanks. Okay, does anybody have anything else? Okay. Um, Kim, are there any questions from the panel, Jen? There was one question about the last day of school now with the change in calendar. The, um, the last day of school is now scheduled for June 15th. It's a Monday. Um, other than that, I do not see any questions, but I guess we'll give people a minute in case they have anything. If they'd like to raise their hand, we can open up the line. All right. While they're waiting for that, on behalf of Norton Public Schools and everybody else, happy Passover to those that celebrate and happy Easter this weekend to those who celebrate that and no questions no questions okay do we have a motion to adjourn so moved carolyn gallagher second second dan Sheedy. okay and we have to do a roll call um yes yes uh kathleen stern yes uh sherry cohen yes carolyn gallagher yes Denez tavas yes and dan Sheedy. yes okay Everybody have a great weekend. Thanks, have a great everyone. weekend. All right. Thank you Bye. all. Bye. Have a great Bye. Take care.